Commercial Rent Reductions. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from realestate.com.au, sorry, commercialrealestate.com.au, looking at Prime Minister Scott Morrison's commercial rent reductions for tenants. Now, I have an interesting perspective on this, an interesting perspective on this, because it sounds good. People will think, oh, commercial rent's too high. Yeah, give those businesses a break, help them out. But there's going to be an issue here. If the government is intervening into the market, it's going to be an artificial intervention. So it means that these businesses that maybe couldn't afford those commercial rents, particularly for this period, will still be there. They'll get a break. They'll get a handout. They'll think it's good. But the commercial landlords and tenants, they'll be forced, forced to keep those businesses there at that cost. And they may take a hit for six months, but then they'll stick with those rents. The market won't adjust to reality. Now, I've been in this situation. We had a, a retail tenancy. It was a, in a little suburban shopping center. And we you know, lost work. Work slowed down. I had to pull down the staff and then I was getting into negotiations with the landlord. Ended up they didn't do some repairs, there was water leaks, so I was trying to fight them for that to try and get out of the lease. I managed to demolish my entire fit out by myself in two days. Who needs to pay a fit out company for that? Nevertheless, coming out of that now a few years later, I've you know restructured the business, I've gotten rid of unnecessary cost, I've made us into a much tighter, more efficient machine and in many ways i'm much better off for it our business is much better off for it our costs have significantly reduced and because i had to go through that pain i was a well i was forced in a way to make those decisions and now we're in a better position for it i realized having that off-site tenancy sure it looked good it was great for functions you could meet clients there but it really didn't make us any extra money. Sure, we could have the staff working there, but now if I need people, I hire contractors and they can work from home. It's interesting. I've start my after about five years of working outside of the house, you know, with different staff. I've kind of my business has merged back down to the size of some of the engineers I was working for, who were just working from home. Had one guy working there, and they were doing all the work. And I'm realizing now, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Even my father did the same thing. He had four staff working from our house back in Victoria. But my point is, my point is sometimes you need to go through these tough times to come out of it better and stronger at the end, out of it smarter to learn your lessons. So by the government intervening in this sector, while it sounds good, it sounds nice, there could be some unintended consequences. It could mean that the commercial rates out there on rents are going to continue to be inflated. They're going to continue to be high because they'll need to learn. If, if all of a sudden people start just breaching rent, stop paying rent, getting into arguments with them, the landlord's either going to realize, okay, we're going to have an occupancy rate that's 60% down and we're going to have issues with our anchor tenants or we need to start coming to the table and making deals here. That's how it works. But no, if the government sweeps in and creates this artificial intervention... What do you think will happen? So th this is, I mean, this is where, you know, is the Liberal Party propping up their mates in the commercial real estate sector? I thought they were a free market party, naively, naively actually. I realize more and more that the two majors, there's very little difference between them, particularly when it comes to economic policy. Very little difference. So... This is the thing, guys. While something can sound good and make you feel happy and go, yeah, that's that's good, that's good, it can have unintended consequences. It can make us all weaker in the long run. Then we end up in the situation where we are, where you've got people simping in the comments for how dare you criticize China. I can't believe it. It's ludicrous. Utterly ludicrous. So let's have a look. Relief could on, be on the way for cash-strapped commercial tenants and landlords after Prime Minister Scott Morrison announced on Friday that the industry was working on a mandatory 
code of practice to deal with the fallout of the illness crisis. Mr. Morrison said there has been progress so far in coming up with a code acceptable to the National Cabinet, but the details were still to be hammered out. What we are seeking to have happen is for the industry to complete their code, and that code would be made a mandatory code incorporated into state and territory legislation where appropriate, Mr. Morrison said. It will be mandatory for tenancies. That is the tenant and the landlord where they have a turnover of less than 50 million and they're participating in the JobKeeper program. Is it just me or is Australia very quickly becoming a socialist state with a planned economy, with the government managing all these things? This is the thing. Are we going to be able to remove this crap that they all put in place when, they, <laughs> when the measures are no longer needed? Will it be possible? Will people be, you know, protesting, going, oh, we need our moral tenancy code, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Such and such interest group needs this perk. Pay for it now, all of you. The foreshadowed code is being urgently formulated as many retailers have been forced to close their doors as a result of the national lockdown, with only supermarkets, food stores, pharmacies, and cafes and restaurants providing takeaway food continuing their operation. Well, here's the thing, guys. Here's another question. Can the retailers sue the government for loss of income? Could you do that? But then again, they'd, you know, they'd have ways to get around that because we all voted for these laws that were probably debated in Parliament, probably just like the cash ban. No one even paid attention to it. Some hotels have been repurposed as quarantine centers or are offering specialties for people self-isolating, while others have shut up shop. In addition, many fashion and other stores finally closed their doors on April 1 after limping on with fewer and fewer customers. The Prime Minister said he hoped the code, which would again be considered at the next National Cabinet meeting early next week, which would include some kind of formula to help tenants and landlords to reach agreement on rental reductions in case of hardship, so rents could be reduced in proportion to the fall in a business's revenue. If, for instance... There was three to six months where a tenant would have to close their doors and no money is coming in. Then one way would be to extend the overall lease by six months on the other side, Mr. Morrison said. Well, what if you don't want that? What if you don't want to extend your lease by that period? He also flagged that there would be mediation available in cases where an agreement was unable to be reached. Those not signatories to the code would remain out in the call, he declared after Friday's three-and-a-half-hour meeting with federal and state territory leaders. What do you think, guys? Do you like the government intervening this way in the commercial sector? Let me know your opinions below. I think it'll have unintended consequences. I certainly think it will. But it may not be enough for some, with at least one small business group calling the pay for payments from the government towards rent relief. Anna Nalda, Chief Executive of the Small Business Association of Australia, said that while she would reserve judgment until she had seen the specifics of the framework, pegging rent reductions to the profit margins of businesses had the potential to get messy. Yes, it did, because they'll want to keep it in place. I mean, there are already some retail, already some retail premises that need to, well, <clears throat> retail contracts, sorry, where a share of your profits or revenue goes to the supermarket or the center <clears throat> it's ludicrous with all of these businesses about reducing a third of this and a third of that it becomes a very messy situation you have to take some of the red tape out it makes it too hard if you need proof of something or help is conditional for example there are people who may not qualify for the job keeper program but need relief i think it should apply to everyone she said I honestly think there'll be a lot of people that probably go through what I went through and realize, wait a minute, why am I spending money on this commercial premises? A lot of people that'll, you know, why don't I just build a build an office at the back of my house and use that? Build a studio there. Oh, I need to meet someone. I can use a temporary facility in the city or I can meet them at their office or I could do it online. I've got a Skype meeting today. She was in favor of the government making a regular capped payment to all businesses for the duration of the crisis instead of individually negotiating arrangements. Wow. 
No mention of the government debt, but then again, no one talks about that. That's not cool. MMT guys, just print money. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's the future's problem. Future's problem. I think there has to be a financial contribution from the government towards the rent. It can be easily approved. They have to do a moratorium that will benefit landlords and tenants, she said, adding that the government couldn't cut back on particular areas when it came to spending. The promise of a code comes on top of various new state and territory government aid plans. These include, in New South Wales, $10,000 cash grants for small businesses like cafes, gyms, and corner stores, with a turnover of more than $75,000 and fewer than 19 employees to cover overhead and bills. But Steve Irwin of Cornell Property said it was unlikely the proposed code would be as prescriptive and watertight as the Prime Minister hoped because of the huge diversity in the nature of landlords and tenants. To try and dress up statements like this as putting flesh on the bones, but at the end of the day, how will it pan out, he, he said. Established landlords are most likely to put committees together, and some already have, to grade tenants into type A, B, C, and perhaps D, and then simply try to set parameters within which deals can be done. They'll also, they'll all be confidential anyway. And tenants face real difficulties as they're having to demonstrate changes in their circumstances, which is fine for some, but for others, their income is so spaced out it's virtually impossible. They might be working in mergers and acquisitions, for instance, and they spend 12 months doing a deal and only get paid at the end of it. They might be fine at the moment, but not in a few months' time. Some landlords, well, anyway, some landlords also might be billionaires with no mortgages. Others could be those with single properties and 90% mortgages. It's so complex, Mr. Unwood said. Mr. Lockwood, Director of Transaction Management at Tenant Representative, Representative Services, also predicted it would be hard to pin everyone down under a simple mandatory code that would be there for the long term when circumstances are changing daily. Instead, he, he advised individual tenants to be open and honest and communicate when dealing with their landlords. I'm telling them to be careful that short-term reactions might lead to long-term consequences, he said. Some landlords are now asking for two years' statements to show revenue before this, while others, the revenue impact won't even have hit yet. It's just important for everyone to be open and honest and collaborative, and then they're more likely to have reasonable outcomes for everyone. The announcement of work on the code follows other help declared for commercial tenants, like deferrals of rent in government-owned buildings for businesses with fewer than 20 employees, or payroll tax for those with payroll over $10 million for six months, and an extension of the three-month waiver for businesses of less than $10 million to $6 million. Well, <clears throat> what do you think, guys? Do you think this is going to get messy? Do you think the government needs to be involved in all of this? Or do you think they have a duty of care to all the people they're forcing to shut down? Or rather than all this crap, should the government just be forced to pay the lost revenue to all these businesses? <laughs> Why not? It's just fake print money. Just print it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We'll see, guys. We'll see. Will it ever be paid off? That's not cool. What are you talking about that for, Florian? No one wants to hear that. Let me know your thoughts and opinions, everyone. Are you in a commercial tenancy? Are you in this situation? What are you doing to prepare? Or, uh, you know, have you started working from home and you're realizing, you know what? I could save myself 40 grand a year if I got rid of that little office. What the hell have I been wasting my money on? Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and you want to help support us, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or on Patreon for a small monthly fee. You can support the channel via our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay, or our referral links at Independent Reserve or KuCoin for the crypto traders out there. We have merch available from the Heiser Sets website or Teespring. You can send us gold using Gold Pass. And finally, we have PayPal if you want to support us that way. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.